We're now going to talk about a poem by Larry Eigner called Bookshelf. Um, it was written in uh, April of 1983. Larry Eigner, uh, here in San Francisco, we wanted to talk about poems that are related to San Francisco. Eigner is not a San Francisco poet in a sense, but he moved to San Francisco in 19, moved to Berkeley in 1978, having been in Swampscott, Ma uh, Massachusetts for many, many years. And he wrote thousands of poems, and they are, some people say, the closest, fullest realization of Charles Olson's idea of composition by feel. These are poems that, that are on the page. And, they, and you get a little sense of it in the poem that we're talking about. But I urge you to get at least one of the four volumes of the collected poems of Larry Eigner. They're on an 8 and a half by 11 page, so that that feel of the big typewritten page could be reproduced. Uh, to me, one of the great, great poets ever. Um, he was, uh, we used to say, use the word palsy for the situation, uh, but really, I think, um, muscularly disabled uh, critically by uh, a badly bungled forceps delivery at birth, mm -hmm. something that one thinks shouldn't or doesn't happen anymore. Um, and that left him really unable to use his hands. Uh, but he figured out, I believe it's his left hand, how to type with uh, one or two fingers. Mm -hmm. And he wrote thousands of poems. And this place that we've come to is famous for taking in people with difference. And uh, Larry was one of those. And he came here in 1978, and he realized this, these were his peeps. So while he's not affiliated with the Beats, he is closely affiliated with the chapter 9.1 poets, the language poets. This discussion we're going to do now will end up in Mod Po in chapter 9.1, week eight of the course. It's called Bookshelf, and I will read it, and then we'll talk about it. Bookshelf, is this biomass? Where's it raining? Bins, sliding around. Oh, here's a different slant. The sun on a puddle in the street. Now it's morning again. The wall has extra room. Jay, what's going on? It's hard to figure out, but get us started. I'm sure by the end of this conversation, we will really I, I, come, I, come to a consensus. I really like the last, last sentence. The wall has extra space, the extra <laughs> room. And why would the wall have extra room in the narrative story sense of this scene, of this situation? Why would the wall have extra room? Because it's morning again. Everything. Oh, just generally, when the sun comes up, there's more room on the wall. <laughs> I like that. Like metaphor. Everything starts new again, and there, there's room. There's possibility. Do we have any evidence that this is about his books? Callie? <laughs> no, I just assume We don't. They are. And it's not bad to assume that they are. Um, Susie Kay, I'm sorry. I promised I wouldn't call on you, but here I am. Bookshelf. Is this biomass? What kind of question is that? What's biomass? A living thing. A living thing, yes. Alex, in relation to books, why would anybody ask about biomass? Molly. Alex first? Are they alive? Say it louder. Are, are they alive? I mean, is this a living no. thing? No. I've got no. the definition <laughs> of biomass. You're actually going to read a definition well, from a smartphone? Well, <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> Melanie, go ahead. What's okay, the yeah. source of it? And then Pamela, and then Pamela. There are two definitions that I think are both interesting in this context. The, number one, the total quantity or weight of organisms in a given area or volume. Yes. And number two, organic matter used as a fuel, especially yeah. in a power station for the generation of electricity. Rachel, what are books? They're made out of papers. They're, They're made out of trees. <laughs> trees. Yeah. Pamela? What were you going to say? You are Pamela. I'm Pamela. You're Pamela. I'm so sorry. I'm Linda. I'm Linda. Linda. Well, I see it as books are what people produce. So it's the biomass of their life. Oh. An expression kind of, of their material own, productivity. The organism. The organism. Okay. Right. Can we have a less fancy reading of this situation? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to give it a try? Bob? 
tell us briefly what's happening. If there is a story, what's happening? He's viewing books or, or collections of books as being just a bunch of X trees that are being just being pushed around on in these bins. Around. Where, inside or outside? Uh, this feels inside. Okay, if it's inside, bookshelf is this biomass. Where where is it raining? Bins sliding around. Any idea what might be happening inside? You are. I'm Michelle. Michelle. I think it's some kind of natural disaster, earthquake, storm going on. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a disaster okay. for no a poet who earns no money to be in an apartment where it might actually be <laughs> leaking. Is it possible? It may not be the end because there's an outside here. I could be wrong. But bookshelf, what happens to the IKEA bookshelf, which is made of what? Particle board. Particle board. Just sit particle board in water, what happens to it? It becomes biomass. It returns to its pulp state. Um, it's possible, I'm not saying this is the final reading, but possible that. Larry Eigner is, what time of day is it in the beginning? It seems to be night because the morning, the sun rises, we get sun later. It seems like an overnight storm because we get, oh, here's a different slant, the sun on a puddle in the street. Now it's morning again. So it's possible that this is a long night in which what's happening? <laughs> it's rain. And, yeah, and Eigner's mobility was very limited. So let's just assume that he was in bed enduring what? I mean, how many of you have had this happen to you? Kate, what's he enduring? Uh, All those books. Yeah, he's just Where are those bins go? What are they catching? Clean the water. That is, mm -hmm. that is happening. It's a night of drip, drip, drip. <laughs> My books and bookshelf are turning into pulp. Maybe. I don't know that this is right. And then the line, um, where's Robin? Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson. I'm right here. Robin. Oh, here's a different slant. Now, that's a turn. Can you describe how it's a turn? Bob, Bob muttered Emily Dickinson, just a, a nice Mod Po reference. And we should get to it. But I, I don't think we need it yet. Oh, here's a different slant. How is it a turn? You know it's a turn by a couple of things. Well, uh, since you've told us that the layout on the page is Mattered. really important, yeah. right? So that he's back. You know, the, the, that sentence starts back. Or that yeah, so it's kind back. of a stanza in the Eignerian sense. In a new room, right? Any other uh, evidence? <coughs> and, and O. O. What's O without an H yeah. in English? O without an H. O without an H. What's O? Who uses O in the English language without an H? O with an H is something else. <laughs> o with an H means, what, huh? what? Yeah. But honorific? honorific? Poets. Oh. Poets, Shelley, oh. 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 oh, 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 that Shakespearean rag, so elegant, so intelligent. Um, oh, here's a dip, so it's po poetic, it's a big moment. Anything else? You're doing, you're on a roll here. <laughs> well, and it's a different slant. We're, we're going to look at things differently. Now. Ah, good. It's a kind of reset. It's not only a tab reset on the manual typewriter, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a reset of poet, poetic diction. Oh, and then, hey, let's try a different approach. Different approach to what, Rachel? To visualizing what's happening in the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, here's a different slant. On what? On what? A different slant on what? Kate Green? Um, well, the, the sun on a puddle in the street. It's kind of, it's one of the most poetic lines of the short poem. The rest are uh, fragments of images. And, and that's, uh, so he's, he's falling back on poetry after kind of a rough night. And uh, after a rough night, we get some, nice. That's, yeah. that's a subtle reading. And what do we know meteorologically? Weather-wise, weather's better. Sun's out. Mm -hmm. So whatever it was that was oppressing him, right. whether it was a bookshelf being discarded outside that he's thinking about at night, or the books in his own apartment because of a leak or whatever, the sun, we get to start over. Mm -hmm. And so many of, of Larry Eigner's poems, mm -hmm. for someone who struggled, struggled so mightily. So many of his poems see the morning 
as a new heroism is too strong a word, a new reality, a new, a new placing of the feet on the ground to start again. Um, and here we have that. Oh, here's this different slant, the sun on a puddle in the street. He's saying, wait a minute, it's not raining. Yeah, the bins of the, are full of water. I've lost my books and bookshelf, maybe. The sun's out, and now I have room on my wall. For new books. For more books or another book. just space. <laughs> and I also got what out of it? Oh. 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 <laughs> I think that Larry Eigner would rather have this than the IKEA shelf. <laughs> the different slant here is metaphorical, as I think it was Emma who said. Uh, it may not have been made, but somebody else. Um, a different perspective, a different way of thinking. But it is literally a different slant of light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for visual artists, mm -hmm. artists who put their <laughs> poems in the field of the page, this has become, this is what the people who use the machines behind me care about. Mm -hmm. They put one letter, one character at a time, mm -hmm. and they set that type, hoping to create a visual feel that's ve so much visual and as well textual, right? Mm -hmm. In order to clear the space you need for a poem that takes up space, because this is a poem that's a poetics that's spatial, you have to sort of render your books either actually through rain or in your mind, you have to render them mm -hmm. biomass. Mm -hmm. Burn them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kate? Reminds me of Robert Creeley's. Uh, Reminds you of Creeley? Dishonest Mailman. Tell us why. My letters, and they put them into a fire. I see the flames, I do not care. And it's, it's the idea of dust to dust. That, and, but there's something larger than that, and that is the poem. And a poet like Eigner, who's constantly thinking about the state of his body, and constantly thinking about poetry that helps him transcend limitations. He's always talking about words that climb over a wall, something that he physically couldn't do, but words can do. So it's not as simple as a, dis a poet of disability using poetry to overcome disability. It is not that. That's not it. It's rather saying that disability makes him think that he has a connection to his books through the concept of biomass and mortality, physicality. I'm going to read it one more time and uh, call someone who's not expecting it to say something. Because that's the Mod Po way, Jack. <laughs> Bookshelf, is this biomass? Where's it raining? Bins sliding around. Oh, here's a different slant. The sun on a puddle in the street. Now it's morning again. The wall has extra room. Do you want to do it, Rebecca? Well, I am struck by the spaciousness of spaces between the word, the letters of bookshelf. And what is bookshelf? A bookshelf is just a holder for books. It's not the books. It's the space, the place, where you could put a book, but it's really the empty space. The only line that is one word in this poem is bins. A bin is a receptacle. Mm. It's an empty place wow. to put yeah. something. Nice. And we end the poem with extra room. This whole thing. Feels Rebecca, like if thing. I had the capacity to give you an honorary PhD, <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you accept? Can we give her a big hand? That was great. Uh, I will just say one more thing about this poem. And I may be overreading it. Most people don't see Larry Eigner as a, an explicitly political poet. Most people don't see Larry Eigner as an implicitly political poet. I think once in a while he has something very shrewd to say about politics and current events. And he might be saying it here. Hmm. It's 1983. He's moved to Berkeley. 
from one super blue state in Massachusetts to another. And it's morning again. It's 1983. The President of the United States has declared that it's morning in America again. That would be Ronald Reagan, the former governor of the, the aforementioned blue state. That's a phrase that whether it's specifically, politically, or ideologically resonant or not, is one that anybody reading this poem in 1983 or 1984 or 1986 or 1988 would say, oh, there's, a, there's an echo of Reagan's claim. And the claim is that, America, that, that Americans can fulfill the promise of America and that if you just work hard and all that stuff. Uh, and trickle down was the economic theory. <laughs> trickle down. <laughs> so no, it's raining in America. And the poor poet, disabled poet, got himself across the country with his books, his only possessions basically, is treated open armed by the poetry community and thought of as a, a great potential influence of a new movement of poetry realizes that, you know, after all, it is morning in America. I'm with my people. I'm where I need to be. Even though my wall is barren, just like my coffers. It's not a flipping the bird, fuck you, to trickle down <laughs> economics and the elimination of funding for the federal support of artists, such as Larry Iger, who could have used a grant or two. Not that. It's an implicit echo that we, or in this case, a poet, gets to claim what mourning in America means. Thank you all for working hard.